Hey, what's going on guys? So here we're going to do episode 2 of Gunplay Critique if you missed the last episode. Basically what this is, is where uh, some of my Patreon patrons can submit their works, whether they be finished works or works in progress, and we're going to check them out here and I'll give my advice and critique to them. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So it's just kind of a way to give a little bit more in-depth feedback to some of my Patreon supporters and then also you guys can have a look and see what and you can also give your feedback down in the comments below and all that or just you know go see what these guys are working on so uh, the first thing that I do want to remind you guys about though of course is that the 100k Hyakushiki contest is ongoing so if you missed the announcement video for that do back do go back and check that out uh, it's just the 100k contest announcement video it has all the information about how to enter there there's a ton of awesome prizes there and so make sure to check that out so you, know, you can enter to win so, so anyway it's fitting that I wanted to mention that first uh, before getting into the video because actually the first one that we're gonna look at is actually uh, one member uh, Patrick the work in progress that he's working on for his Hyakushiki that he's gonna be entering in the contest now uh, he sent some photos here, so I'll, I'll put the photos up as we're kind of going through these. And so we've got a couple photos, and here's what he mentioned, is that he's calling it the Hyakushiki version new. Uh, obviously, I suppose because he's using the new Gundam's shield and funnels there as well, a couple of them. And he's... So we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at these as I give you kind of his, his commentary that he mentioned. So first of all, just the, the backpack here, he mentioned that he's replacing the... Uh, red plastic coil parts on the backpack with these aluminum tubing bits. Um, so that looks good. I'm all for that. I don't know if he's going to be painting those or leaving them in this metallic color. I think it could go either way. Um, obviously, the metallic. If you want, if you're the kind of person who likes using a bunch of metallics on your kits and stuff, then you know having something that's already metallic, you don't have to paint it. Uh, it works. Fine. People do that. Uh, I don't know. He didn't mention about though if he's going to be planning on painting that or not. So. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think, yeah, whether they painted or not, it's a interesting improvement over just the, the regular tubing parts that were included there on the backpack, so I like that. Uh, then he said he's using a mix of gold and light gold to paint uh, the actual gold pieces, so I guess he's going to be painting the armor in two-tone gold of gold and light gold, so I assume they may be getting rid of the Hyakushiki's dark blue and red parts, perhaps, uh, but again, he didn't say uh, for sure, but I've... I like that. I like the two-tone gold idea. That's good. I, but I don't know. One thing that I do like about the Hyakushiki is that it's a lot of gold, but it's broken up really nicely by just a couple little bits of dark blue there for like for the torso, the feet in red. So having it in in all gold uh, can work. I mean, there's certain other there's other Gundams like the Akatsuki, which, as far as I can remember, is all gold. So, well, it does have some colored bits on there as well. I've got the drag Momoko kid over there, I'm glancing at the box. Uh, but anyway, all gold can work, but I think breaking up a little bit, I mean, uh, oh, there's the Phoenix, of course, but in destroy mode, it's broken up by the Psycho Frame and other bits, so I'd, I'd say I wouldn't go 100% gold, I would have a couple parts maybe in something other than gold, even if it's just gray or something like, for example, the Phoenix, even when it's in uh, unicorn mode, there's still a couple bits, uh, they still got the dark blue backpack and feet and the gray parts in there like around the torso the uh, stomach section anyway so uh, and then he said that he's gonna use three separate top coats to emphasize the different textures I like that I'm always for using different top coats uh, it doesn't work for everything you know, you know but uh, depending on what you're going for especially if you're going for something that's going to be in gold like this or using some metallics I like the look of that it's having the glossy uh, gold shiny parts and then having some other like I said if you're having gray parts or especially the inner frame in like a matte finish I, th I always think that that looks good personally so uh, I'm all for that idea and then uh, that's pretty much it for his commentary but I just want to just look through uh, these pictures here so he's got his pictures of the kit so far I mean obviously this is just work in progress photos but the one thing that I think uh, would be good to work on is it's he didn't include any pictures of the back so it's kind of hard to tell what the back looks like uh, the funnels out the back I think uh, can work it reminds me of like the uh, the narrative Gundam B packs how it has the two funnels on the back, uh, so I'm not like you know we can't see in the photos he didn't include one of the back to see how they're mounted, uh, and I assume he's maybe very early on in the process as well, so it might not have that all totally worked out yet. But uh, right now they're a little bit off to the side, which I think can be 
it can work if, they, if that's how they're mounted to the backpack. If it looks like they're just not, like if when we actually see the back of it, if it looks like they're just kind of like sagging, uh, then maybe you might want to change that or just uh, fasten them up so they're straight. If you want them to be straight, if you want them to be angled, then have them angled. Um, but again, I, I think this is just kind of a, a rough state that he's working on, just to kind of get the placement of how he wants everything on there at the moment, I would guess. Uh, and then the bazooka, beam bazooka, I believe that is, from, I, I know it's from the Serpent Custom. I forget the exact name of that weapon. I think it's a beam bazooka anyway, something like that. Uh, that weapon I like, just because I like the design of that weapon. The way that it's holding it, is, it looks a little bit awkward. I would say maybe put the handle on the other side so that the bazooka goes up under the arm. Uh, or you could try turning it upside down. I'm not sure how that would work. It might it might look a little bit weird, but try turning it upside down uh, so that the kind of circular part at the end is kind of going up over the back. The camera would be on the underside, which it, uh, I think can work. Uh, some people might think that oh, it's kind of weird to have the camera on the underside of the gun, but I think it. I've seen it done in other builds, and I think it looks fine. It doesn't look too weird. Uh, it looks unique, obviously, but. Unique's not always a bad thing. It's always a good, often a good thing, right? So, uh, I would say the 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 way that it's holding that weapon is a bit awkward at the moment. I would say maybe try to test out maybe a couple other different ways to hold it. Uh, and again, we're just seeing in just kind of a regular standing pose. I don't know uh, if he's gonna want to eventually later put it in some sort of action pose or something. But having it in, you know, if you are have it, whatever pose you end up going for with this, I think. Uh, putting, holding onto the rifle, uh, that uh, big cannon in some sort of other, a little bit more natural way, I think will help benefit the overall look of the pose as well. That said, uh, the contest, unless he's entering in the diorama portion of the contest, the posing is not exactly a big part of the judging for the contest, so it's not really the most important thing, but posing will definitely always help your cause. It's never gonna hurt. Um, and then he had this photo here of, it uh, looks like a detail, where he's working on painting up some of the details on the leg inner frame. Uh, and it looks like, I'm not sure I, how that's painted, I would say it's maybe uh, just brush painting there, it looks like. So, uh, it looks, it looks alright. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of have to see what the whole thing is going to look like. So I think that's just making me work in progress to see how the details are, are looking hand-painted details on some of the details on the uh, leg portions. One thing I would say at the moment, just looking at that, and again, I don't think it's done yet, but uh, uh, I would say make sure that you can panel line that stuff as well, because those details there, you can see uh, there's, there's details in there among the parts that are painted uh, that are not panel lined, so just make sure that you can panel line those in to help uh, bring back the definition between the, the bits that are painted there on the legs. So a little bit of panel lining on that and that'll start to look a lot better I think uh, but I think it's a cool idea overall just uh, giving the funnels I mean the the parts that he's chosen to equip onto the Hakushiki here I, I think can work so I'm looking forward to seeing this you know once it all kind of comes together so that's it for Patrick's entry all right so the next one here is from Greg and he submitted his new Verka that looks done so it's not a work in progress, but just a completed build here. He said, I just painted it up. Uh, I know I showed it in the showroom. Yeah, he already showed this a bit in our uh, Patreon Discord showroom section where we show off uh, sometimes works in progress, but it's mostly for you know, completed stuff. But people can share works in progress and stuff in there as well. He said, it's just airbrushed and Tamiya acrylics, white, dark blue, flat yellow, and flat red. Uh, so pretty standard. The gray is a dark gray mixed with a little white. I use German gray for the inner frame. I always approve of German gray for the inner frame. Uh, and all right, so let's take a look at this. Yeah, I think, I, mean, I don't mean this in a negative way, but it's a pretty standard new, new Verka. Uh, the dark parts or the gray parts of the armor, how it has the two-tone color armor uh, is a little bit dark. I think maybe go, going a little bit lighter on that is how I personally like it. Personally, when you have like the two-tone white, uh, if the, the if your off-white color is too off-white, then I think it I think it looks better. The closer the colors are, where it's like just barely noticeable, I think that looks more natural. Uh, 
as to kind of like what the purpose of that look is. The look is so that like I, I don't know that like from afar it looks white, but then when you see it up close, you can see okay the panels are like a little bit different colors, that sort of thing. Uh, sort of like you would see on actual like ships or uh, aircraft or something like that, where some panels are maybe have been replaced or something or just painted at different times and so the paint color is just a little bit different. Uh, uh, but when you have this where it's much more, much larger difference, then it looks like it's supposed to be two, it's supposed to be two different colors. So it just gives it a little bit different look. Uh, and that's just kind of a personal thing. Uh, and I, I've mentioned that many times, I'm sure, especially with Josh. It's something that Josh and I have talked about a lot, probably, especially on, uh, on G Check, which we haven't had in a while. It's kind of uh, retired for the time being. But yeah, so that's just a kind of point of personal taste, whether you uh, like the, the, uh, the gray and white to be more defined or closer. I mean, you know, uh, obviously, as, as with anything, it's, it's your kit, and if it's going to be on your shelf, you have to like it. So just me personally, I would say uh, having that gray even lighter, I think, uh, is how I would have personally done it. Uh, and one thing that I'm noticing in some of these pictures here, and it's kind of hard to tell. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Oh, yeah, it's hard to tell. I can't quite see clearly in the photos, but it looks like some of the dark blue, uh, the painting on the dark blue maybe... Uh, some of the paint may have pooled a little bit in a couple areas, especially on the top of the chest. It looks like, I can't tell if it's just like a bad reflection or something. Uh, but it also looks like there's a little bit difference in uh, the finish on the dark blue. The dark blue looks glossy, whereas the white and the gray parts look matte coat. So I don't know if this is, if that's in, if that was intentionally top coated like that or not. Uh, or if it's not top coated, if just the blue paint that he used was just a glossy type paint and maybe the other colors were not. But either way, like I just said a few minutes ago, I think a two-tone uh, of like gloss and matte finish uh, top coat on a kit can look cool. And I think in this case, you know, if it was done on purpose, uh, it can work as well because you got the dark blue. Which most of the rest of the colors is either it's just all grayscale, basically white and different shades of gray. Uh, and just having all of those in matte, and then just have just the dark blue parts in, in glossy, I think uh, can work if that was done intentionally, but again, I can't say uh, for too certain. One thing that I think would also maybe have benefited this as well was uh, using some, you know, little bits of acrylic or enamel, whatever paint, color paint you want to, whatever kind of paint you want to use, just to bring out some of the little details on the frame as well, because this frame is a very detailed inner frame. And obviously most of it's going to be hidden underneath the armor, but little bits that are poking out, especially like around the joints, the elbow joints, the knee joints, uh, the little fins poking out of the chest, uh, maybe highlighting some little details in those with a little bit of, you know, most commonly people use a, uh, like metallic colors, but you don't necessarily have to. Uh, just using some like light tan colors or something like that is something that I like to personally use. Uh, but just a little bit of silver or something, whatever you want to just maybe color in a couple of little details on some of the armor or the inner frame bits that are showing uh, I think would help to show show off the inner frame of this kit again the amount of inner frame that's showing anyway otherwise I think the layout of the paints and the decals and everything all looks good uh, just one thing as well with this one I would say just the the posing a little small adjustments to the posing would help make for better photos as well and Again, this is just photos that he sent in to me, so I don't know if this is really necessarily how... Uh, like, it's not... he's just sending these photos to me just for critique, so... It's not like a... It's a, not a posing competition, it's just sending them for critique on the build, I think, but... Uh, just the pose as well, I think, just some adjustments to it, so... Having the legs at a little bit, a little bit wider and a little bit... Having, not having the legs like straight down, but a little bit wider... I should probably do a video about this, uh, but other people have done videos about it. I know there's a ton out there, so that's why I've kind of felt like maybe I don't really have to, but maybe I, I will at some point. But having the legs a little bit wider and a little bit out at an angle, and then the arms a little bit uh, turned in at an angle, so you kind of have that kind of pose. And then having the head down, of course, you have your chin down, eyes up, look like that. Uh, it always kind of helps, especially a big tall kit like this, to get that kind of tough look to it. Uh, the pose that he's got up on the action base with the fin funnels flying though I think is better but again I think for flying poses um, just having the, having the feet pointed down because his leg, feet are still a little bit flat 
so it kind of looks like he's stepping more than flying so pointing the feet down so it looks more like he's flying and just looks more natural uh, so yeah just a couple of adjustments to the pose I think and that is about it I like that the that he went and did the panel lining it looks like on the white parts in gray is good uh, rather than black of course you there's no rule about that but using black uh, for panel lining white parts uh, is a starker contrast using gray uh, usually just looks a little bit more subtle a little bit nicer uh, for the eyes you don't have that really dark uh, panel lining going in on the white parts so I think that was a good choice otherwise yeah I think that's really about it I would say just advice for the next time uh, you know just the few things that I mentioned but maybe try I mean, this all depends on personal taste of course this is all my personal taste but try just a, a custom color scheme I think now that you've uh, taken a stab at you know the official color scheme here for the new Gundam maybe on the next one uh, try your hand at coming up with a little bit different take on a color scheme you don't have to go like completely completely different but like for example if you're painting the new Gundam here uh, like this and you want to just make it a little bit different for like the dark blue parts instead of dark blue having them painted in orange instead or like a lavender color or something so that you're really only changing one color one part of the color scheme uh, but it can be uh, a fun exercise in just trying something different with your builds to try to make it a little bit more unique if that's what you're into but you know otherwise I know there's a lot of people who want to just recreate you know their favorite uh, robots from the anime so they want to stick to the official anime color scheme which is fine too so uh, uh, for me these days I just find myself not ever wanting to paint anything in the official colors I always have to change it a little bit it's just uh, how I prefer to do it but all right so the next one here is from Donovan who submitted his cute cube bars M conversion now first of all I just want to give him uh, a big round of applause for completing this kit. It's something that's been on my to-do list for a, a long, long time. If you guys will remember, I did a video about this conversion kit way back when, and it's a pretty bad one, but I think it just needs a lot of glue. So basically, all the parts, I mean, it's pretty, you can't, kind of, can't really build the kit straight out of the box. You have to kind of glue it and paint it, or even if you're not gonna paint it, you have to at least glue it. Anyway, it's a mess, but uh, he, completed it so basically if you guys are unfamiliar with this kit it came out a few years ago now so uh, this is a conversion kit for the real grade Gundam Mark II to it's a plastic conversion kit uh, to turn it into the Barzam so it's pretty cool uh, and he here just said that he had the wrong kind of lighting for this uh, so apologize for the poor image quality and also apologized for the brick pose but it's all it's all good we've, we've kind of talked about that with the last couple of builds uh, already so it's all right obviously like I said this is not a posing contest I just wanted to see what you guys are working on so this is once again a completed build here and first of all he had this this uh, cool little name tag there at the front of the stand I wonder if that's 3d printed I'm gonna guess that it is something that he 3d printed for that with the RMS 154 refined Barzam there so that's a cool addition uh, onto that. Hopefully he's going to be painting that as it is. Uh, it looks like it's just maybe fresh out of the printer and maybe not painted yet, but painting that would be cool as just a way, something to add to the base there. Uh, as for the painting of the kit, the kit looks really good. It looks great, uh, the painting on there. I mean, it's it's simple. It's not like, it doesn't have a bunch of pre-shading. It's not like a two-tone color armor or anything like that. It's just kind of a nice, simple, clean paint job. I like that. Obviously, you've been, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, this is the kind of paint job that I often will do most of the time uh, just because I like just a nice clean simple paint job with some nice colors and yeah it's got that here so it looks good um, some decal work on there again it's just relatively simple this kind of Titans decals I don't remember but I'm assuming those are the decals that are included with the conversion kit yeah I think so I recognize the the PZ logo there I'm, I'm pretty sure these are all stuff that are included with that conversion kit so that's cool um, not really a whole lot that I can really say too much about this. I think it looks good. Uh, the pose is simple, I mean, but that's that's fine too. I don't really have too much of a problem with it. It's just a kind of standard standing pose. I think it looks fine. Uh, really, just the, the base, maybe doing something for the base. I think having the clear base is fine. But I think when you have a, a kit that's just looks good, looks solid like this, uh, having on a little bit more, I don't know, sort of 
don't want to say like presentable base because it's presentable but what do I want to say uh something that makes it look more like the work of art that the kit is when you have a, a kit that you know you've done really well you want to have it on something that's going to really do it the justice that it deserves so uh, you know, painting the base or getting some other sort of like a, a nice you guys know I'm a little bit partial to a nice wood base uh, I think that would look really nice with this just to kind of help it really look like you know it's a really nice painted kit which it is so uh, yeah other than that I mean there's really not a whole lot much else that I can say about it I think it looks good it's everything's done pretty much exactly how I would do it so there's a few maybe tiny little bits of detail that I maybe would have gone and painted in like uh, like on the side of the shield like the black bits in since like the black part of the shield it's like a couple little bits so like little tiny bits of detail here and there that I maybe would have uh, just just painted in just to you know bring out a couple little details like I was mentioning with the new gun we were taking a look at a minute ago so maybe painting in just a couple of little details here and there is maybe something that I would have done but otherwise I think that's about it not really too much else that I can really say about this one I think it looks good um, yeah good job all right and the last one we're going to be taking a look at here uh, I think this is the last one this is from Jake who submitted his uh, 100 scale Grimgird all right, so then he basically just went through the colors that he used here for the frame. He used Guy Notes Gunmetal and Tamiya Pale Gold. On some areas, the armor, Mr. Color Cobalt Blue, Guy Notes Midnight Blue, Tamiya Flat White. And he said that this was a color scheme uh, based on his favorite college football team, the Kentucky Wildcats. And it is a homage to one of the most beloved quarterbacks in the program's history who passed away prematurely at the age of 38 this year. So a little bit kind of sad backstory to this build, unfortunately, but it's cool that he kind of made this dedicated build uh, to him. So apparently this was uh, Jared Lorenzen, who was number 22. So that is why there's a 22 on uh, the build there for this uh, quarterback. So the weathering is not yet complete. And then he went through some of the things that he did for the weathering. Chipping is done with MO, uh, MO chipping color and Vallejo silver. Also some silver dry brushing, some panel lining wash done with uh, MO starship filth. And then a touch of black in some areas. And then uh, he's going to be doing a little bit more weathering and a little bit more work on the shields later on. So it's not completely done, but we can see it's almost done anyway. And so we can see some photos here of this. Uh, first of all, I like the color scheme on it. I think that it works. Uh, at first, when I was first reading this and I was hearing that it was, you know, based off of just like a sports team, I've seen those done in the past and they don't always work, but I think that is when you're trying to adapt, I don't know, when you're trying to make the, uh, like the, take the colors and, and force them onto the kit, but I think what he's done in this case, I don't know, he's, let's say for example, the football team wears a, a white jersey and blue pants if you had this kit and you had uh, you had the the top half of the armor in white and the bottom half in blue it just doesn't really look good it doesn't really look natural it just looks kind of stupid uh, but in this case uh, what he's done is just you know taken the you know the two colors that he wanted to use basically white and blue and then just laid them out in a color scheme that I think works it fits well to the design uh, he's painted the piping parts in white, which I also like. Uh, I think I did the same with mine. I, I don't remember offhand, but I believe I did. That was for the HG. This is the 100 scale, obviously, but yeah, same thing. Uh, and the coloring, uh, the weathering, I mean, the weathering I meant to say, uh, does also look really nice. I like that it's not really super overdone. It's very subtle. It's just got a little bit of weathering on there. Some dry brushing uh, looks nice around on some of the edges. Uh, I can't see, you know, a lot very well. The pictures are just a little bit dark uh, here, but I think so far it looks good. I know he said he wasn't completely done with the weathering yet, but you know, I'm sure he can add a little bit more to it. But I would say maybe, uh, you know, don't, don't. I mean, I think you know what you're doing probably well enough, but I would say don't, don't. I wouldn't go too much more with the weathering. I think it's a good amount there as it is. You know, like it seemed like he he said he just wanted to do just a little bit more kind of to it. So uh, I would say that you know, a little bit more, go for it, but don't do too much more in my personal opinion. I think it looks good as it is. 
Uh, as for the painting of the inner frame, it does look good as well. Uh, you have some different bits kind of highlighted, again like we've been talking about with the other builds. And I like the fact that there's a couple of decals, it looks like, on the inner frame. is something that I, I like. I don't always do, personally, but I, I like to see that. Uh, it just kind of adds a little bit of realism. I think if you're thinking about the robot realistically, it probably would have caution markings on the actual inner frame parts as well, not only on the armor. So uh, I think that does make sense, and it's always cool to see on there. It does look good. But yeah, the colors look good as well. Uh, I think the, you know, blue and white are not, you know, easy. I mean, there's not just, just blue and just white. You can have a lot of different kind of shades of that. You could have a warm white. Uh, which would be very different from a warm white or a cool white would give a very different look with the blue so I think it looks like from what I can tell in the photos it looks like a pretty cool shade of white that he's gone with and it works well with the blue obviously with the blue being a very cold color especially this cobalt blue that he's gone with for this if it was more of like a, something more a little bit more teal kind of blue then I think a warmer white would probably work better with that so it's just uh, the color tones here uh, that he's chose for the colors I think look good and I think that it's almost done and he submitted this now it was, it's been a little bit ago about so he may have it done by now actually so I would, I'd like to see some finished finished photos of it. I'm not sure if he's uh, finished it quite yet or not this was uh, submitted a week ago at this point so maybe he has gone ahead and put the, put the finishing touches on it since then but I think it looks good. Uh, it's a nice homage to the uh, player that he wanted to kind of pay his respects to, and it's a cool way to kind of get some inspiration for a, a cool custom build as well. When you have something like that that you have in mind that you want to do, that you want to achieve with your build, so it looks good, Jake. I like it. And uh, that is it for this month's episode. So took a look at four builds, all, all really good stuff, I think. So. Thank you guys, the four of you guys who did share your work. Uh, those of you who are also eligible patrons, you know, submit your stuff for next month. I'll let you guys know when the next month episode is going to be. Probably pretty soon, but I don't, uh, don't really have a plan. It's just kind of when I remember, oh yeah, I have to do that. Uh, so we'll, we'll, I'll let you guys know when that is going to be. And yeah, as I mentioned before, that I wanted to do these live. I, I couldn't do this one live. Uh, just because I'm actually feeling a, a bit sick right now, so I really didn't want to be bothered with trying to do it live. I just thought, let's record it and edit it. So let me know what you guys think. I know doing it live, the good point of that is that we can get like live feedback from you guys, especially if the guys who made this are live in the chat, they can give feedback and it can be a little bit more of a conversation rather than just me telling you my thoughts about it. Uh, so I do want to still plan to do these live uh, in the future, but I was just kind of having some trouble with that recently and yeah, hopefully I'll be feeling a little bit better next time where it's time to do one of these and we can uh, we can do that live. Hopefully I'll get, be able to get that working. But uh, at least in this format like this, the, the video quality is better and the photo quality. I mean, you guys are able to see everything uh, better in this video. So it's an improvement over last month. Uh, but again, this is still just a, a new thing that we're trying. So it's a work in this video series is a work in progress itself. So always uh, open for critique and feedback from you guys as to what I'm doing here with the videos. So please feel free to let me know your thoughts down below. So that's it for uh, this episode, guys. And I'll see you next month for another episode of Gunpla Critique. Bye, guys.